Welcome to another video. This video feels really surreal. I've got an announcement to make to everyone. It's something that I'm really proud to say. And this is going to 100% be an emotional video for me. And anyone out there that can uh, empathize with a hard journey like staying sober. I've been sober now for six years. What an achievement for me. I mean, if you saw me before, you wouldn't have recognized me. Honestly, I was constantly drinking alcohol. I was very severely addicted to amphetamines um, and all other substances. And I was just a different person altogether. What I thought I would do for... This year's sober video is, I thought I'd read through some of my old Facebook posts. But before we get into that, I just want to give people a, another run through of my life. Around 14 years old, I started to hang out with, uh, you know, street level gangs and it, it graduated into something more serious and then it turned into being around uh, well-known organized crime gangs and then I was a drug dealer and an addict and... I was quite violent and everything sort of gets out of control and it landed me in prison. Uh, I was first uh, thrown into solitary confinement under suicide watch, spent uh, five days in there, released on house arrest, awaiting a sentencing for the firearm I was carrying. In that world, obviously, you need to defend yourself if you get in some danger. And the way I did that was, you know, I'd carry weapons. Uh, sometimes a hammer, a knife, or a firearm. The the environment begins to shape you. And that's the thing, like, you can be doing things out of character for you, but the environment starts to mould you into the individual that you become. And, you know, at times I became a monster. I became a monster. I scared my family. I've, you know, been not the best friend. And I've hurt a lot of people in in my past and something I regret and I'm not proud of. I also heard a lot of animals. I was consuming animal products three times a day and, you know, I've killed animals in the past. Another thing I really regret. So, you know, when I'm teaching people about animal ethics, I'm coming from a place of being on the other side of the fence. So I'm not trying to say that I'm morally superior to anyone. I've just learned something. I've changed my ways. I've become enlightened to the harm I was causing. And now I'm trying to live in amends, make amends for the mistakes of my past and, you know, try to defend the innocent, defend animals who can't defend themselves. So addiction's really serious and look, it can stem from childhood things, it can stem from families, you know, being split apart and alcoholism in the family and not being raised in the right environment not trying to blame anyone for the reason I become an addict, um, the reason I become a violent gang member, not trying to... Bl I made my own decisions. But sometimes um, the odds are against you and it's sort of the things that you fall into you don't really have as much control over as you think you do. I'm a very lucky person. I'm very lucky and I'm very grateful because some of my friends aren't so lucky. Some of my friends are doing, you know, life in prison or they're... They're still addicted to drugs and, you know, I, I feel very grateful for having this second chance and not wasting it, not wasting this opportunity that I have to influence people in the world, to help animals and to dedicate my life to a purpose. And that's one of the things that will keep you sober is having a purpose every single day. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy. The first year for me was one of the most hardest years of my life. I was riddled with anxiety and regret and shame and 
I didn't have an alcohol or drugs to use as a crutch. I didn't have my friends to back me up. I didn't have a gun to help me with my paranoia and insecurity. Um, I was on my own. Staying sober, though, through that rocky part of my life was the best decision I ever made. Not to say that I'm completely free from all of the things that I've done in my past and all of the psychological damage that was done from being in such a crazy, um, deceptive, violent world for so long. But it's a constant journey to getting myself better. Recently, for the last, I'd say, eight months, I've been doing therapy for PTSD and some other, you know, just things that I thought I could work through myself, but I've had... um, I've had help from a therapist and there's no shame in getting help for if you've been in such a very such a hectic environment for many years there's no shame in trying to work through some of those deep traumas that have been covered up. What I want to do is go through some of my Facebook posts. <sighs> you know, obviously like my Facebook posts began to change. When I first got on house arrest there was like I was drinking, I was still like an aggressive, you know, con- you know, violent person and drinking alcohol and I was saying ridiculous things on my platform. Um, luckily, I didn't have that bigger platform, but it was just an outlet that I was using. Um, here's one I want to point out here. 16th of October, 2012. If you want something you've never had, you've got to do something you've never done. Being sober was something I had never done. So let that be... A quote to sink in if you really do want to change your life. If you have a family member who's going down the wrong track, if you keep repeating the same actions, you're going to get the same outcome. So if you want something you've never had, you've got to do something you've never done. I was an awakened individual in many respects. I was just, you know, I was trying to be more conscious, but I was clouded by drugs and alcohol in gangs, ruled by my ego, and, you know, the odds were against me. Here's another interesting one. December 19th, 2012. People that are against cruelty to animals and eat caged eggs are hypocrites. 2012, way before I was vegan, I was eating all other animal products. I had a glimpse of awareness there. Okay, If only I'd known that all animal products are inherently cruel, maybe I would have changed sooner. But you can see there was, there was some glimpse of like ethics coming through there. I'm just going to tell you, throughout my house arrest, I was partying. I had, you know, different people around all the time. I was constantly filling the hole in my heart with alcohol and drugs and substances. I, you know, I was having fights in my shed. I had people come over. I had knives on me. I'd, you know, use them in self-defense out the front of my house before. Yeah, I've, I've used knives on people. I've used hammers on people. I've, you know, I've committed acts of violence. Um... Have I committed an act of violence for the last six years? No, I haven't. Um, no, I haven't. And I, I plan on keeping it that way. I plan on always, you know, unless I really had to do something in self-defense, maintaining a non-violent lifestyle. Um, I really think that that's important to, you know, it's important to be consistent if you want to be non-violent towards animals and I think you should extend that to human beings. And being a vegan has really helped me extend my compassion to human beings. That's why I think, you know, looking in in these areas of your life where you're committing the most cruelty and violence, um, like your diet, really helps you become awakened to some of the ways that you're treating other humans that might not be, um, that might not be acceptable. So let's just go. I want to show you this one here. <laughs> Uh, this was before, just before I went to prison. So I went to prison May 13th, 2013. It's May 13th, 2019. So it's funny how so many people are against animal cruelty, which don't get me wrong. So am I. It's a great cause. But I'm not that naive to think that I believe in it that strongly. Otherwise, I wouldn't be chowing down on a burnt piece of dead flesh from a mistreated, drugged up, genetically modified pig's carcass. Let's be honest with ourselves here. Until you're a vegetarian or a vegan, you're not an animal rights activist, you're just a hypocrite. Either that, or you're just plain ignorant. No offense, everyone. Just had a big scotch fillet steak and felt guilty, so I'm taking it out on news. How's that? This was uh, May 2nd. So um, I'd I'd already 
done a juice fast. I'd, I'd learned about the power of fruits and vegetables. I'd been following uh, raw food uh, educator Dan McDonald. So I'd, I'd known about sort of karma. I'd had seeds planted. It was starting to come out and I was starting to voice this. And, and you got to remember, like, the people that were following me on my Facebook... You know, we're, we're talking like, yeah, yeah, general friends and family. We're talking about other gang members. We're talking about other people involved in, you know, the underworld. And I was voicing my, st- my stuff pretty, you know, I was, I was really um, letting people know how I felt about this. So I went to prison on May 13th. I'd been partying right up to my prison date. I had a massive fight with my family on um, the weekend before I got locked up. I was really lashing out. I'd assaulted my some of my family members. I was just a mess, you know, like I'd like a three week bender leading up to my court dates, um because my court dates were postponed. But on May thirteenth, boom, I got my sentence handed down to me and that was it, got locked up, you know, got stripped down, got thrown in prison, spent six months or five or six months in prison becoming sober, realizing that the gang world wasn't for me and realizing, wow, what have I been doing for all this time and drug use and who am I having a crisis of identity. And, you know, when I was released, I was released on the 10th of the 10th, 2013. So 10, 10, um, 10th of October upon my release. Here we go. This is my first post as I got out. Where is it? Back from my holiday. Fuck. It feels good to be out now to go through my hundred notifications. <laughs> That was the day I got out of jail. This is a photo of me and my brother the day I got out of jail. I had a grown a beard and I'd been training religiously in prison. I'd lost a lot of weight. I had a six pack nearly when I got out of jail. It was great. I was eating a lot of raw fruit, fruits and vegetables in prison, but I was also eating animal protein. I thought I needed animal protein to build muscle. Obviously now I know you do not. When I was released out of prison, um, I was put on house arrest again for two months. Here we go, 24th of December 2013. Looks like it's another Christmas and New Year's on Home D, which is house arrest. Third in a row. Oh well, I'm still happy and grateful. It could be worse. I could be a turkey freezing in a dark cage in my own feces waiting to be knocked off and fed to one of you bastards. Ha 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 ha. Merry Christmas to everyone. Have a safe and cheerful festive season. Love you all. Don't get too pissed. Um, This is that. I had all meat eaters following me. I don't think I had one vegan following me. I don't think at all but this is how I used to talk when I got out of prison and this was before I went vegan still then freedom parole granted for 2nd of January what a relief so happy time to spread my wings again that was an interesting two and a half years of my life I'm, I'm glad to see the end of it and embrace the beginning of a new chapter I'll remain drug and alcohol free of course and focus on work training and healthy living Thanks to my family and friends that stuck by me, everyone that came around and spent time with me. I had some of the best times of my life on Home D, which is house arrest. It was you guys who helped me get through it without breaching. The only regret I have is putting the people I care about through all this bullshit. It's all a lesson, I suppose. Bring on 2014. Shit just got real. You know, I was really determined to change my life around. But, you know, all, while all this was happening... um. I had friends who were like in the hospital that, that had been getting shot. I had my uh, friends who who had the, been, you know, seriously injured in gang fights. There was a lot of wars going on and there was victims on both sides of these fights. And it was really crazy, scary time. And, you know, there was really serious things going on in prison. And it, it's just a... You know, it's just a big wake-up call for everyone. And it's like, you know, what do you do? Do you, do you, do you continue going down this track, um, end up in prison or seriously injured in hospital with a, or with a serious addiction like I had? Um, or do you turn it all around? And these are things that I could only anal- analyze with a sober mind. And this is why sobriety is so important to me. And it's like, it's the crux of maintaining this lifestyle I do, this this purpose that I have, I've got awareness now. I can see things clearer. November the 1st, 2013, became a fruitarian, a raw vegan. When I first went vegan, I went raw vegan because I was, you know, educated by raw food uh, guy. And that was the day I became a vegan, basically. And then from that point onwards, I educated myself on veganism. I found Gary Yarovsky and animal rights and, you know, I was following... Freely and Durian Rider and going, you know, which was, you know, 
all of the finding different communities online really helped me stay sober. Um, here, here's one. Wow, the cops just love rocking up for a raid. Six men strong with bulletproof vests on. I said, have a look around. There's no guns here. Just an abnormally large stash of bananas. Are ah, the perks of having a prohibition order. So, like, look, I, I was still getting raided after I'd become vegan and sober. The police, after a while, knew that I wasn't a danger. I wasn't going to dabble back in in with uh, gangs and drugs. When I pulled myself out of gangs and drugs and stuff, I pulled myself out of everything. I stopped associating. I stopped. Um, I just went on my own f two feet. And that's like, if you want to ever pull yourself out of something that serious, you got to, you got to just go off on your own, mate. And it's, it's, you have a, you have to have a revolution of self and, you know, you only get one life. You don't want to spend it sitting in a prison cell. You don't want to spend it on drugs and doing bad things. You want to, you know, you want to make sure you leave a positive mark on the earth. And I feel like in the six years that I've been sober, I really have made a massive impact in the lives of so many people. And now I get messages every day from people saying, Joey, you know, you've changed my life. You know, you you don't understand. You've changed the whole course of my life. Like you've given me purpose. You've woken me up. You've You've helped my family. You've, you know, you've inspired me to be an activist. You've inspired me to help create change on earth. And it means so much to me knowing that I come from the gutter, I come from, you know, addiction and violence and gangs to now be inspiring people to make compassionate choices and changing their life around too. And, you know, I, I want to continue to do that. I want to continue to help people. And here's, here's a post from me when I, I first left, left gangs. And I hope no one is dirty or upset with me. It's a very difficult decision and I hope you'll understand. And someone left this comment, Joey, I've no idea, I have no idea what's going on. As I've always told you, you can't please everyone. you just got to make the best decision for yourself because after all, you're the one who has to live with it. And that's so true. You've got to sometimes make decisions for yourself and and commit to those decisions and never look back, you know, never look back. And here's another post I made. I'd rather walk alone than with a crowd going the wrong direction. And that's a really powerful post. Here's another post. Um... Let's be honest with ourselves here. You're not really an animal lover if you have a piece of a dead cow's ass cheek next to your mashed potatoes on your dinner plate. Stop kidding yourself. Haha, <laughs> wow. So I was very open about that. Here we go. I documented 20th of October. It's been nearly six months without getting drunk. That's a new personal best. I'm going to try for one year sober just for something different. On the path to health. Then um, here's my, my, my one year sober. Today I'm 12 months sober, six months be vegan, been abusing drugs and alcohol for over 10 years. So this is a big deal for me. And as you know, I was probably the loosest party animal out of anyone. It feels good to be out of that place now and focused on healthy lifestyle and training. So anyone out there who wants to get clean and thinks they can't do it, well, I'm living proof that anything's possible. It's just a choice in the moment. Anyway, I hope this inspires you. Joey's Daily Wisdom. So... Look, most of you know a little bit about my past and where I come from. It's been a journey. I'm not going to say staying sober for six years has been easy. There's been times where I've wanted to drink alcohol. There's been times when I've just wanted to let loose and party. But I think when you have something to wake up for every day, a purpose in your life, and you've you really got to make that decision, you really got to ask yourself, has the actions you've been taking in your life up to this point led you to the point where you want to be at? And for me... The first 26 of years of my life was a lesson. Um, you know, it led me up to a point where I just come to a crossroads and I'd had enough. And, you know, God bless my father, my, my father who passed away, who I feel like has been with me in spirit through so much. And, you know, he lived to see me turn my life around and he would have passed away happy that I'd pulled myself out of the hole that I was in. You know, I've overcome suicide. I've overcome some real hard times and I should have died so many times. I've had near death experiences. I've been run over and been held hostage at gunpoint. And, you know, I've been in the, f the crossfire of some very serious, dangerous things. And um, I haven't been a perfect human being and I haven't been a good human being for a lot of my life. But I, I can happily say now without any shame or regrets that I'm striving to be the best person that I can. And you know, I'm still not a perfect person, but I think we all can learn from each other and we all, we've all got things about ourselves that we want to change. And I just don't want all that, that hardship I went through to be for nothing, you know, and I don't want my life to be for nothing. I want to leave a positive mark on earth. And that's always been 
my motivation to start my YouTube channel and to get out there. I just wanted to to change someone's life for the better because I'd, I'd done so much bad in my past. And I always talk about the fire that I have inside of my heart. If anyone else has that fire inside your heart, don't ever waste your opportunity to spread that. That's your purpose and it's calling out to you. Don't waste your life down that rabbit hole of drugs and alcohol and ego and gangs and violence. There is a better way. If I can pull myself out of the hole that I was in, anyone can. I want to say thank you to my mum and my family for sticking by me through all of that. Anyone that I've hurt in the past, you know, I'm living in amends for that. I'm sorry for anything that I've done and every single day I strive to do better. I will be an animal defender until I die. I, I really do think this is the cause that I was put on earth to fight. Animals can't defend themselves and they need every single one of us doing our part. I know this is probably going to be a long video. I don't care. I, I just got a lot of things I want to say. Like today feels like so surreal. Six years, you know, could have wasted my life down the bottom of that bottle and, you know, in that bag of amphetamines and I could be sitting in a cell right now just wondering what I did wondering why I threw it all away, but I'm not. I've got this opportunity and I'm eternally grateful for that. And I will not waste it. I will capitalize on this opportunity. I'll make sure that we make some serious change on earth before I die. And I hope you all feel the same. Thank you so much to all my supporters, to all of my people that, to all those people that follow me, even anyone who hates my guts, you know, you don't know what someone's been through, you don't know someone's story, you don't know me, you don't know what's going through my mind, what my real intentions are. My intentions are pure, they're positive, I really do want to help, and yeah, I just, I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop. He's the spoken G's on my uh, couch at mom's house, please. <laughs> That's on Facebook, brother.